He was a celebrated Minnesota artist who throughout his career developed a unique vision and style of painting that combined bold colors, expressionism of Native American modernism. Hi, this is Anita with 5 Minutes with Art. Yeah, every once in a while we come across a very interesting artist that maybe we hadn't heard about before and one that we feel like the world needs to know about. And one of those is an artist by the name of George Morrison. George Morrison is considered to be one of the most important modernist artists, yet few people know his name. He is one of the founding figures of an art movement that is known as a Native American modernism. He is a Native American and he was born in 1919, and he died in 2000. He was a celebrated Minnesota artist who throughout his career developed a unique vision and style of painting that combined bold colors, expressionism of Native American modernism. Most of his work is found at the Minnesota Museum of American Art, but you can still find some of his works in some of the other museums. He also recently was honored on one of the U.S. postage stamps, and I actually bought one of those postage stamps. And it's it's really it's fascinating art that he does. If you get a chance, check out my blog that I've written about him, which is entitled, Where Can I See George Morrison Native American Modernist Paintings? And then we list there some of the places where you can see his paintings and you can see the postage stamp and learn a little bit more about the postage stamp that he did for the United States postage stamps. He grew up in northern Minnesota in a rustic fishing village on the north shores of Lake Superior. He was a Native American who was able to speak his own Indian language. He started creating art after a year-long hip surgery when he was younger, and he took up reading, drawing, and carving to help pass the time. He was supported by his teachers who encouraged him to you know, continue with his art. He graduated from high school up there in northern Min Minnesota, and then he attended the Minnesota School of Art. And later, he was part of the New York Art Students League in 1946. He was known to be a friend of the famous artist William de Kooning, both who participated in art exhibitions in Manhattan and throughout New York City. He had 12 one-person shows in New York between 1948 and 1960. He later became a Fulbright Scholar, and he moved to Paris, France. And then he was active as a teacher exhibiting in New York, Princeton Town, and throughout the United States. It was later when he sort of retired and after he had finished doing a lot of his teaching that he moved back to northern Minnesota. And it was there he started to find his roots again in, in Grand Portage Indian Reservation. And for 17 years, you know, that sort of made that his home on the north shore of Lake Superior. And it was there that he began to do a series of paintings and collages of different scales. And the three things were really important to him in keeping true to his Native American roots. It was land, water, and sky. So when you look at his art that he did for the postage stamps, you'll see that a lot of them are called, you know, sun and river, you know, the Lake Superior landscape, you know, all different things like New Day, Red Rock variations. So he really has some very interesting art and take on this. What's interesting about him is that there's this movement that a lot of people don't really know about, and I'd be honest with you, I didn't know that much about it until I started doing research on it, is Native American modernism art, and he's one of the founders of that. So, it's, you know, basically it's art, modernism art, which has a Native American focus to it. So he's one of several other artists that are considered to be the founders of this movement or this generation of Native American artists as they basically, you know, produce art that has a Native American inspiration to it. So if you're fans of Native Americans or you have Native American roots or you want to learn more about this Native American modernism art movement, um, check out the blog that we've written about it. But this really, he's an artist, which I believe is worth knowing about, is one that, like I've said, has been forgotten. People have not remembered him, but yet he was one of the greats throughout this era. This is Anita from 5 Minutes with Art. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate you, and we appreciate you joining with us. We'd like to thank our team who helps put this together, specifically Rico, and we'd like to thank you for being part of our community. Thank you.